you know, what inspired you to research these historical beaches? You know, well, um, I was look. I, I was thinking about this movie called The Inkwell. I mean, it was it was, you know, probably nineteen early mid nineties. So it was it was quite a while ago, and um, it depicted you know young, you know young black people frolicking on the beach, just enjoying themselves at Martha's Vineyard. And so, you know, I just started thinking like how we don't really have that I know of. Um, those kind of beaches. And I wanted to give my daughter like an experience like that over the summer. So she'll have, you know, kind of these fun summer memories of, of a beach home or even a lake home and, and, you know, with her peers. And so that's kind of what led me on the journey to kind of start researching, um, you know, historical black beaches. Mm, okay. Okay. So, um, as you're going along, so Highland, I would have to say Highland beaches is, is a historically black beach, correct? It is. Um, Highland Beach is in Maryland, and it was actually uh, designed mm. and um, built by uh, Frederick Douglass and his son. Mm. And so there's a, a, a particular part, there's a landing on the second floor that leads from the from the bedroom. And I took some photos from the from the front porch, but mm. the landing is they turned the house into a museum, but the landing, it, it overlooks the eastern shore. And so there's a plaque that shows basically Frederick Douglass wanting to see the Eastern shore where he was once a slave, but now he's a free man and he stood on his own beach. So I thought that was pretty, pretty epic that, you know, he, so much that he did and, um, you know, now he owned a beach. So that was, that was pretty significant for me. Wow. He owned a beach. That's, that's definitely significant, you know, yes, yes. you can see can see myself owning a beach and I go like, right I love beaches. right <laughs> I would love beach. that one day but you know the the prices of uh you know things are were are pretty penny nowadays but yeah so that, right, I thought that was right. pretty significant pretty <laughs> mm -hmm. you know I mean what what events led to these beaches becoming historically black well as you know you know segregation is nothing new to us and um mm -hmm. blacks just like any anyone else they're white counterparts they wanted you know, some kind of rest and re relaxation. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they weren't allowed at white beaches. And so essentially they carved out, like we had to do so many times throughout history, our own schools, our own neighborhoods, our own stores, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. Uh, we carved out of a heaven for ourselves and where we didn't have to worry about, you know, getting in trouble for, you know, uh, what do you call it, trespassing right. and that sort of thing. And so, um, uh, let's see, I think it's called Oak Bluffs now. The, the clip that I showed you before was, it was called Oak Bluffs. Mm -hmm. um, and so essentially um, the help of the, you know, of the whites, they weren't allowed to be on the beach. And so, right. you know, they found places further down. They kind of put their flag in the, in the, in the sand, so to speak, and created an mm -hmm. uh, enclave and a heaven for themselves, which, which we've been instructed to, to do um, for the last 80 years. And so, you know, these are blueprints that we can use to carve out some R&R &R, um, for ourselves. Right. And so you said these are blueprints that we can use. So why do you feel it's important to revive the history for our people? Well, you know, as, as I've mentioned before, I'm an urban planner um, and mm -hmm. I also do land development and consulting and just meeting um, the mayor of that particular town and him talking about the history of, you know, why it's so important. He and I both had had a conversation of why it's so important to, you know, preserve a legacy for ourselves, because one of the things that he says that, that the beach, Highland Beach, which is, which is a private beach, and so you can't come onto the beach unless you're a resident or you're a guest of the residents. And so he said it was really important because so so often throughout history, our land was taken from us. Our, mm -hmm. you know, our, you know, neighborhoods were gentrified. And so they made a clear, um, a clear path for themselves. And and the houses, most of the houses are actually still owned by the, the original descendants and had just been passed down. And mm -hmm. there's like a, um, I believe there is a, um kind of a covenant where you know you have to either be um a descendant or you're highly vetted before you're able to purchase a, a piece of land in highland beach and so i thought that was mm -hmm. remarkable yes absolutely wow 
I have to take a trip up there myself. I want to see that. I want to see where we kind of still have some power and some control and ownership because that's important, especially being able, like you said, owning a beach isn't isn't nothing that's just, oh, yeah, I can go outside and just buy me a right. beach real quick, you know? So right. to be able to still have ownership and control of that of that land and that property there and then even be able to you know, determine who can and can't move in. That way it can't just be get taken over again. Right. I could definitely say that's some good history to know because that just lets us know that we have the ability to do that again. We can replicate that again. And Absolutely. So you kind of touched on it a little bit, but are these beaches open to the public? Um, some of them are. Um, there's, there's a beach in um, Florida called American Beach. That beach is open to the public. However, there are no houses there. Um, Highland Beach is not open to the public. Um, Oak Bluffs is open to the public. That's part of Martha's Vineyard. But there is a historical side also that's almost been kind of created into a museum mm -hmm. um, showing our, our legacy um, you know, for Martha's Vineyard. And mm -hmm. so some of the beaches are private, um, but you know, you, I would just do my research ahead of time because we did get a, a rude awakening. Once we got there, we were like, oh, mm -hmm. oh, can't just pop our little blankets down and sit out, <laughs> you know. Right. So, but the mayor was gracious enough to kind of explain to us, you know, how things worked and, um, mm -hmm. you know, just said it, it's imp it was important for them to have control of who came into their communities and that sort of thing. And so if you're not a resident or a guest of the one of the residents, then you will be politely um, asking no uncertain terms to leave. Absolutely. And so, you know, you've been talking about these fantastic historically black beaches, you know, but can you give us some highlights? How did you feel? How was the ambiance as you were there taking your trip to Highland Beach? You know, it was very peaceful that um, particular day. <clears throat> and we, um, it's funny, we did run into someone who, um, you know, they were walking towards the beach. And so we asked them, you know, hey, this is our first time here. Can you tell us a little about it? And they said, this is our first time here too. So it's kind of blind leading the blind. But fortunately, once we um, we stood on the porch of Frederick Douglass's home, the mm -hmm. mayor, he pulled up in his golf cart and he asked, you know, if there was anything that he could do to help us. And so, um, so yeah, we kind of started asking him. So, you know, give us a little history of, of what the beach is like. Mm -hmm. And, um, so he was gracious enough to, to explain to us, you know, that this, this was the first um, incorporated yeah. town in the United States, black town that was incorporated in 1922. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and they had their, you know, they were able to legislate everything they wanted in terms of, you know, their, their covenants, um, selling the properties to um, descendants of, um, you know, the original inhabitants. And so I thought that was really important um, that they kept that history. And they said they they made the decision to not allow commercial endeavors, not allow, you know, this commercial entity or anything like that to pop up because he said mm -hmm. then there that's when you start letting, um, you know, gentrification occur. Absolutely. Man, we thank you. We thank you for joining us today, sister, and really giving us that information. It was some good insight. And like I said before, it really gives us insight on how we can replicate this and do for ourselves, you know, gain, gaining back ownership of these different areas and beaches and property and implementing different policies so that we can make sure we keep control of that. So thank you again. Absolutely. You're welcome. Thank you. You have a good night. Thank you. You as well. Thank you. Let's pause for announcements from our sponsors. When we return, we will interview musical artist and entrepreneur Aisha Kareem. We'll be right back. Be a part of the force that powers truth in journalism. Go to nnvnews.com slash donate.
worldwide, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download the Final Call Radio app and take us everywhere. everywhere. On your phone, on your computer, on your tablet, on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You can also log on to FinalCall.com and click the Listen Live button or FinalCallRadio.com. Final Call, Final, Final Call, Call Radio, Radio, the official voice of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam. Please share your thoughts with us in the comment section below. Follow us on social media at NMV News and please subscribe to our YouTube channel at National Network View. I am Anissa Muhammad with NNVNews.com.